All right, hi there. Welcome back to Stats Flip Notes. I'm Coach Owings over Frisco High. Uh, we're going to build off of Lesson 2.6 that Mr. Haran helped us out with. Uh, we're going to start off talking about Z scores. Uh, so in our notes here, we're talking about a recent intro stats quiz that close uh, had scores that closely followed a normal distribution. So that's important right there, those words, a normal distribution. Uh, we're told that there's a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 10. Now, first thing we want to do is we have a normal curve down here, a normal distribution of our scores. We're going to want to label the values that are 1, 2, and 3 standard deviations above and below the mean. So we know our mean here, our X bar is 80, and our standard deviation is... 10. So we'll start right here at our mean of 80 and we'll go up one standard deviation of 10 that goes up to 90 and then up to 100, 110 and we'll subtract going the other way down to 70, 60 and down to 50. So once we have it labeled with all of our standard deviations, then we can move on to the next question here, which is also number one. Uh, Biff scored a 60 on the quiz. We want to calculate a z-score for Biff and label it on that normal curve below. So now that we have our uh, normal distribution labeled, we can move on to the next number one. Biff scored a 60 on the quiz. We want to calculate a z-score for him and then label it on the normal curve above. So our Z score is going to be the value we're given. So we're talking about Biff. We're going to subtract the mean, which for a sample is X bar, and we're going to divide by the sample standard deviation. Now we may have seen Z score written as our value X minus our population mean mu divided by our population standard deviation sigma. So we, regardless of which one we're going to use there, we're going to plug in the values so we know Biff scored a 60 and that our mean on this quiz was 80 and the standard deviation was 10. When we do that subtraction first, we'll get negative 20 over 10, which gives us a value of negative 2. So Biff's z-score shows that he's negative 2 and he's two standard deviations below the mean, and we already knew that from looking at the normal distribution curve that we have labeled there. So something that could help us out there, help us out now that we know that he's at exactly two standard deviations below the mean, is we can use something called the empirical rule. Should probably spell it right. So the empirical rule tells us that since this value falls directly on negative two standard deviations, then we know exactly what percentage falls between negative two and two standard deviations of the mean. So what that means is that due to the empirical rule, we know in statistics that if we have data that follows a normal distribution, just like we have this normal symmetric curve here, uh, we know the percentage of data that falls in between negative one and one standard deviation, negative two and two standard deviations, and negative three and three standard deviations. In fact, I have that right here. So the empirical rule tells us that in between negative one in between negative one and positive one standard deviations, 68% of our data should lie within those two standard deviations. Between negative two and positive two standard deviations, most of our data, 95% of our data should fall in between those two uh, standard deviations. And then basically all of our data, 99.7% of our data should fall in between negative three and three standard deviations of the mean. Um, this is a page on Investopedia. I'll have a link to this in the, in the comments below, in the notes below. So we can tell, uh, we can go to number two and use that idea. 
the empirical rule to help us figure out what percent of students scored less than BIF. So we are going to be looking to the left of BIF into that little section there. So from the empirical rule, we know that between negative two standard deviations and two standard deviations, there's 95% of our data. So what that means is that there is 5% left over on this little section here and this little section here on either side of the curves. So that 5%, that's going to be 100% of the curve, the entire area under the curve. Take away that 95%, that's where we get that 5%. That 5% split over the two left, far left and far right sections of the curve when we divide that. That'll give us the section we're looking for, that BIF, that's the students, of, students who scored less than BIF. So that'll be 2.5% of students scored less than BIF. Marty, on the other hand, scored a 90 on the quiz. So we want to calculate our z-score for Marty. So we find our z-score, x minus the population mean divided by the standard deviation. So that'll be 90 minus our mean was 80 divided by our standard deviation, 10. So that's 10 over 10, so that is 1. So we have one standard deviation to the right. So he scored above the mean, so it's going to be a positive number. And we're going to label it on the normal curve above as well. So Marty scored at one standard deviation above the mean, and we could have figured that out because we knew our 90 was right there. Now we want to know what percent of students scored less than Marty. So we're going to shade that a different color. And we want to know what percent of students scored less than Marty. Everything under the curve to the left there. So we can use the empirical rule here again. And the way we do that is that we know that in between one standard deviation, negative one standard deviation, positive one standard deviation, we know from the empirical rule that 68% of our data lies between one standard deviation below and above. So let's jot that down. So negative one standard deviation and one standard deviation, I know there's 68 and we still have to account for the rest of the data over here to the left. So if we have 68% accounted for between negative one standard deviation and positive one standard deviation, what's the rest of the percentage underneath that curve? So we have 100% minus that 68% that we have accounted for gives us 32% left over on either side. When we split that in half, that tells us that there's 16% on each side there. So Marty was from positive one standard deviation all the way to the left. So that'll be that 68% plus that 16%, which is 84% approximately. So approximately 84% of students scored less than Marty on this quiz. Doc did wonderfully and scored a 97.4 exactly on his quiz. So we want to calculate a z-score for Doc. So let's use our z-score formula that we learned in 2.6, Mr. Haran. So we have the value, take away the mean, divided by the standard deviation. So he scored a 97.4, the mean was 80, and the standard deviation was 10. So when we do that subtraction, that's 17.4 divided by 10. So our z-score for DOC is 1.74 standard deviations above the mean was his grade on the quiz.
Let's go look for that on the normal curve. So we're looking for about 97.4, so it's somewhere over here. Notice it doesn't fall on a perfect standard deviation of one, two, or three. So on the next question, we're asked for, we're asked to shade the area to the left of 97.4 to figure out what percent of students scored less than DOC. So we're going to shade the area to the left of DOC. This whole thing to the left here, that's what we want to figure out the percentage of. It doesn't fall on a perfect standard deviation, so because of that, we have to use, we can't use the empirical rule. because it's a whole number, not a whole number standard deviation. So what we need to use is we must use a Z table. You may hear this referred to as table A as well. So let's go look at table A. So what this table does is it says, hey, you tell me a z-score and I'll tell you the probability or percentage of the curve that lies to the left of that value. So you can kind of see that in the drawing right here. So table A has got two sides. It's got, if you notice, the z-scores. I'm looking right here. All these z-scores are negative on one side all the way up to zero and they're positive on the other side. So our z-score for DOC was 1.74. So we're going to look on the Z's on the left side here. Let me move myself out of the way. We're going to look here, and we're going to start with the first part, 1.7. And then we're going to look for the 4 as well. And so we're going to look for where 1.7 and the 4 intersect. And so that tells us the percent of the curve that's to the left of that value. So there is 0.9591 out of one, or 95.91%. So the area under the curve is 0.9591, which when we multiply that by 100 and move the decimal place over two places, tells us 95.91% falls under, of students scored less than DOC. So he had a really high score, so that makes sense that a lot of students scored less than him. Um, we'll be practicing using this table um, a lot.